welcome to Non-Perishable Goods Podcast. <laughs> well, you know, tomorrow is 4th of July, and I'm not feeling so celebratory for I America. Saw, I saw a meme this morning. It said, uh, ain't nobody coming to their birthday party because they don't deserve a birthday. You know, like America doesn't deserve a birthday party. Um, oh, I mean, we really don't. We're we're being faced with the threat of losing a democracy, you know, or, or a supposed democracy. There's a lot of different beliefs out here that we don't truly have a democracy, um, mm -hmm. which we don't. I mean, because of the electoral college, mm -hmm. but the popular vote still works. I mean, it's still because I think the rules are for the electoral college. They have to go with what the popular vote is yeah. for that state. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I think there's only a couple states that don't allow that. Don't allow it. Yeah. They're, they're probably the original 13 colony type states, you know, that kind of deal. But that kind of go and do their own thing, not based on if the popular vote won for that particular state. You know, does that make sense? Am I yeah, making sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think what we're seeing is is kind of a microcosm of, and, and I hate to sound funny, but like, this is kind of what Cat Williams prophesized about, about what, four months ago when this all happened, you know, when he came out and said his truths. And then he was just like, he kind of manifested that, you know, 2024 would be that year, you know, and and I think at the end of the day, um, what we are seeing is a microcosm of the last eight years um, without a political figure that seems sane for office, right? Like, and Joe I don't care. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like, it's, it's kind of what I said in our, in our podcast about all of this, right? With the politics and the things of that nature and how I view office, right? Like I view, I've always viewed it as a, an office that you would exalt the highest character, exalt the highest level of IQ and, and, decision making and independency and, and also collaboratively uh, with whoever it is in your Congress, your cabinet and your Senate and things of that nature. So I, I think the microcosm is, is we're just seeing a lot of things being stripped away that were worked very hard to obtain and get um, that have helped others, um, especially women's rights, um, you know, people of color, myself, yourself, you know, like you have like a double-edged sword. I have a double-edged sword, you know, being a black male and you being a black female. Like it's, I feel like there's just an onslaught of an attack on the things that we we've been raised on the, as value, right? Like, and, and to be able to have a voice and, and yeah, you're right. Like we have to use the term democracy very loosely in today's world, right? Because it's not necessarily that, like, there's a lot of like, I feel like you're playing a game and then like, the person you're playing with is like keeps adding rules to it that only benefit them. Like we all had that friend when we were young, right. That would play shoots and ladders or sorry, or connect for, and somehow some way they were, you know, they would mix in a rule. Like I know I used to do it a few times with my little brothers, you know, it's like, I, you know, just. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause you were an older brother. Yeah. <laughs> you got that. You had that power and the yeah, people that have the power make the rules. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that there's just a lot of added, like a lot of additives, right? <laughs> like in non-natural preserves, like that are getting mixed into this whole stew uh, that we call the United States. It's scary. Because, yeah. I mean, the whole Make America Great Again is going back to a time when they feel that there was more, when this party, Republican Party, had more power. But then there's that whole argument that the Democratic Party used to be the Republican Party and the Republican Party used to be the Democratic Party. And the only thing, I mean, the thing that has changed is their platforms, mm -hmm. you know? Because it, it, it was, you know, I guess that, how can I say this? And that's kind of how we have to vote now. It's like, we have to vote for a platform. We have to vote for the platform, not just the leader, as you were saying, you know, both of our leaders are pretty weak right now and everybody sees that. But I think the important thing that people need to know is that we are losing everything, but we also have to 
support based on the platform and if it is in line with what you believe in. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the MAGA people are happy. Like this is this what's happening is very detrimental to like liberals and Democrats or whatever. They're like, we're losing a lot of the civil liberties that have been in place for 40, 50 years. You know, and, that's, that's a tough part to see is because it's like if you take your parents into an accounting of all this, right? Like my dad's 74. And so he's lived through Jim Crow. He's lived through these things, you know, and the civil liberties that he fought for. He was on the picket lines. He was a protester. He was a black, wow. you know, so it's like these conversations are a little bit harder now to have with him because he's seeing some of the fruits of his labor and the strife and the stress. Right. Like, so. Uh, being reversed yeah i'll bring a, a story up like that kind of where people don't understand like kind of the nuance of just like civil rights stuff right and like so willie mays passed away a couple weeks ago and then orlando cepeda another hall of famer from the giants just passed away this past weekend but the day a couple days before a really big game in Al mobile alabama where you know or birmingham alabama where uh, willie mays was born and, and actually played his first professional on his first professional team uh, with the Birmingham Barons, uh, they had a game there. And so it was only a, literally a couple of days after he passed, they, they, this game was already set to be played on the Major League Baseball scheduling. And Reggie Jackson got on a platform and he was asked a question. And it's like, you know, the question was, are you happy to be back here? And his response was very chilling. Mm -hmm. And that's who I think about when I think about voting and, and things like that is the people that have come before us, the people that are, you know, obviously what my profession is in baseball and things of that nature, like what those people had to endure. And even what I see now, like even going back to Georgia, just this last nine days or so where things are different, you know, they're different in that part of the country. Not much. Is it segregated? Uh, if, did you feel that it was segregated or what? Not as much as it was when I went to school there originally. Mm -hmm. Like when I was in the South originally, it was a lot different. Um, I think interracial relationships are more uh, common everywhere now. Um, I think that there's more of a mixture of people. Because I think the one thing that usually brings maybe a higher exaltedness to someone, right? I don't know if that's a complete word, but mm -hmm. just a level, like leveling up on things is, is that you have Black and white money. Like you have very strong, prominent black people in Atlanta and, and in Georgia, and they have money, just as much money as, you know, affluent white people, you know, a white man or whoever it may be, he does have. So I don't I think that Atlanta's you're getting different. that kind of deal. Um, I just think there there's obviously some backwoods thinking and thought processes. Things are a lot slower. So I, I can understand where our progressive thought process here in California, I can totally see it. Like we're, we're super progressive with our bills, our laws, how we try to handle the present and then into the future and where they may be stuck on the things that we were dealing with back in 2010. Yeah. You know? So I can completely see how that it's hard to unite and be on a united front, especially when your ideals are so far apart. <laughs> You know, like it's it's not that anybody's right or wrong in their beliefs. It's just how do you see where you want this country to go? And a lot of these people are extremely happy because they see that it's going back to what they want. They want a traditional conservative. I mean, we could keep race out of it, but I really do feel a lot. Yeah. See, that's the thing. It's like, because, you know, I shared with you that thread that Michael Harriet and I follow, I follow Michael Harriet for about eight, nine years now on Twitter. And he's very outspoken. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. He hasn't been. Who shot is he? I didn't, I didn't look into who he was, but I read the thread. Uh, he's, he's a black historian figure. Oh, okay. He's very popular. He's written several books. Um, I'll share with you more offline about it. Maybe we can get into him a little bit as you know, we get into more shows and things like that. But, um, He's somebody who's super conscientious. It's it's almost he's almost like a Van Lathan, but he's not as political as Van Van Lathan is, right? Like I feel like Van has a platform that is kind of exploded in a way, but like it exploded in a sense that 
sometimes I don't know either which way he's going. Sage still the same thing. Like she left ESPN and now she's doing all these things. And I, I actually watched a podcast of hers earlier this morning at around like 5 a.m. And she had two conservative brothers on there that were talking. I'll send it to you so you can see it. But it's like there's just different new nuances of all of this, right? And there's so many different people that have so many different levels of thinking and and what their thought process on it should be. And it is and I don't and I don't think everybody's getting the full story, you know, to make a a complete decision in like because right now if people are out here talking about, oh, you know, Trump 2024, and these are black people, white, it's everybody. And just from all the knowledge that I have on Trump, I just don't understand how somebody could vote for him other than race. Well, like for you and I, like, I think over the last three months or so that we've been doing this, like, I feel like a a level of closeness with you on certain things, especially when it comes to the political piece of it and just kind of our moral compass and where that lands. And it's, it's just hard to listen to. Right. So I was in Atlanta when they were in Atlanta for the presidential. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Um, it was kind of wild to me, one, because it's like this thing's done at like nine o'clock at night over there. And I'm like, both these dudes probably go to bed at like 10. <laughs> 7 p.m. <laughs> yeah. And so just the things that I saw. And if you go back and look at other debates, like this debate didn't really make sense. Like, it didn't so- inform us about any policies or anything. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't go away feeling good. I didn't go away feeling like either one of these men are, you know, good for our country. Um, It was it was just a uh, it was just terrible. It was terrible for where we are as a nation. Well, because we're so far ahead of the curve on so many things like the technology and the advancement there. And then the advancement with AI, the advancement with gathering and, and explaining information to others. And I still feel like 2020 was for me was a big revelation of reading comprehension and listening comprehension. I felt like you actually really got to a chance to see who is smarter now, like, you know, who does listen to what you're saying and can actually verbatim take your words and illustrate them out the same way that you were you were speaking. Yeah. And it, it, sh- it also showed me that like the most articulate person comes across as the most intelligent, mm-hmm. even if, because I mean, in that debate, everybody thinks that Trump won the debate because Joe did not articulate. He was stuttering, you know, because of his speech impediment, but um, Trump, he was lying. Like, does that, how do <laughs> but people didn't know that he was lying. You know, but he was able to articulate and his words well. So therefore, people think he like murdered or killed Biden on that stage. But it was all lies. Yeah. And the propaganda piece of it is, is is that's what we're consistently up against. Right. Like is the propaganda aspect. And I've always been told like there's the, the you have to pick the lesser of two evils when you're voting or when you're thinking about political parties and. You know, being a small business owner for so long, there there is a lot of conservative ways that I have to think about. And a lot of it's taxes, a lot of it's Medi-Cal, Medicare, things of that nature that can benefit me. I think Obama really aided me with Obamacare because what it did was it allowed me to go to the doctor without having to be on my ex-wife's thing. And it allowed me to have my own jurisdictive uh, way of health care without having to pay three grand a month you know for it and then a hundred dollar copay and things of that nature and obamacare has helped so many people but okay. now, and and that's why the republicans never put forward a plan and was able to like repeal it because they tried to repeal it so many times but it's it, that's just kind of where we are too it's like all these and they haven't even touched it but all these things that have been in place they're going to try to repeal or they are they're reversing everything that has been in place that has helped americans just on like 
that that example right there. And then the scary thing is, is obviously climate control is a big deal and things of that nature. And so when those things are kind of stripped from us or now like the level of regulation, like who's looking at our food? The, like do people this is the biggest thing on that for me is if you take away government from regulating what businesses and corporations are doing, that just means these corporations are going to do whatever they can to save money. So that means pollution. That means they're going to just, you know, things aren't going to be checked thoroughly. Like we're going to have a lot of problems. You know, there's going to be a lot of problems. If, 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 if nobody is being watched, just think about this on a regular level, friend, peer level. If people aren't being watched, they're going to try to get away with whatever they can. And this because is. And that's another thing is like, so I, I look at that and I said it, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we did this piece, right, was it, it the president of the United States should have the highest exalted character of our nation. And he should be the, he or she should be the example of that character. And when it's. I have my quorums about Biden and, and the, 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 the crime bills and things of that nature with him and Senator John Kerry and Kamala, like I, they're not my ticket. Like I never I never voted for John Kerry. I actually didn't vote that year uh, for president just because I, I didn't want uh, a Republican and or a Democrat in office. Um, there are things that I feel like, and we haven't talked about him much, but I like Robert F. Kennedy's uh, platform. I like what he's saying. I actually like a lot of what Vivek was saying too on some things, just because it was like, it was more coming from a place of I'm going to have a course of action or I have a plan of action as opposed to, just talking to talk, right? And it's like, that's what I got through the debate was it was just like a lot of talking and a lot of nonsense talking. I felt like I was almost in a country club locker room. You know, it's like, dude, like this is the kind of conversations I see at 24 or Cal Fit. Right. You know, when they had the golfing debate, yeah. who's better? <laughs> hold yeah. golf. I'll play if you I hold can, your bag. <laughs> I can tell you that I've heard these different conversations like, what we saw that night on that stage with others. And so. Because they're both elitists. They're both not necessarily living the life of mainstream America, you know? So. Yeah. I, mean, I think for our time frame, when you break it down like that, like who, who best gave us that example, who best exalted that, that persona. And, and it was Barack, right? Like we felt a closeness to him, not just because he was black, but, he just seemed normal. Yeah, like, he gave hope. Yes, and, and and he did what he was supposed to do while in office. And I really don't get into all the semantics because I thought that he did a great job, you know. Yeah. But his hands were tied. And like a lot of things with Biden, his hands are tied because if the Congress is majority Republican, he's not going to get his laws passed as easily I think that sucks is, is just knowing about all of these things that can be put in place now by the president. Like that's the scary piece of it, right? They it's have like all the power. Yeah, they have so much power, and they have these different um, executive execution things that they can do, and I and, and just things that you didn't learn about in government, right? I took AP government my senior year, and these are things that were never brought up, like. I never thought the president just had alter, you know, autonomy to make a decision um, that is not beneficial for the people. <laughs> you know, I, it's I just, beneficial for the corporations or whoever's lobbying I'm, them. You know, break that down that we get into the conspiracy of the United States being a big corporation in its own right. So it's like, okay. But then it's not really a conspiracy because we're capitalists, like pure capitalists. But with this Project 2025, to me, it feels like they're making it more uh, like dic like a dictatorship or like communist party. You yeah. know, like it feels like they're going to try to regulate our whole entire lives. A long time coming. Right. Like and I think that they share values and viewpoints where they feel like what they say goes, you know. And I think that that's the scary pieces of it as well, right, Stace? I mean, it's a scary piece to say, okay, like these people can basically control your body and what you do with it and can control when you go out and when you can't go out, control who calls and doesn't call. Like, 
Yeah, like what level is it going to? And I wouldn't, some of the things they're trying to put in place, I'm not totally against, but I just don't like the people that are in charge that are putting these things in place. They're, they're rogue, they're radicals, they're extremists, they're, they're like, on the verge of violence at any moment and ready to like go to civil war. Like, like even the guy who authored the project 2025, he said yesterday that, you know, well, we won't have to go to war. There won't be violence if the left just allows us to do what we want to do, you know? And that means replacing the government with all those kind of people, like getting away, getting rid of the career professionals. So that's like, taking away the checks and balances of our government. Yeah. So we're yeah. really, this is really it's scary. next level because we don't know what level they're going to go to because the whole, in when Roe versus Wade got overturned, there was a lot of things within that, even interracial marriage. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, what, you guys want to go that far? Like how far do you guys want to make America great? Yeah. And and like like I said, I sent you that thread and it was pretty extensive, right? Like, hold on, let me bring it up because like I don't want to lose I don't want to lose anything in between what what he had said because he was just he went off, right? Like it was it was a really good thread, and he, he just talked about things like you know the passage of the Thirteenth Amendment in Florida. Yeah. Like we need to look at our constitution. Like look, I the other there's like actually three parts to the establishment of America. The Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and then the amendments that came with that. Like our the founding fathers, they actually put a lot of things in place to try to keep us from this moment that we're in. Because they were capitalistic thought processes and ideologies. And you gotta remember like they were about like having their own thought processes about, you know. Yeah, because they didn't want to be ruled by a monarch in, like the British. That's the whole thing that we're celebrating tomorrow. The, the 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 Civil War, you know, the 1776 Civil War and where we wanted to not be under rule of a, a monarch. And we're basically going back to that. And I'm really curious to think like those guys have, I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen them, but they wear the 1776 shirts. Have you seen those? Like a lot of guys in like Roseville. So basically they want to go back to the founding of the constitution as it is in 1776. And I'm just like, dude, how do they feel about all the power going to a president or all, you know, and a lot of the power going to the Supreme court. I think they're just ignorant enough. It's not the people anymore. The we, yeah, the people, it's not that. But that's never what it was in the first place. I think that that was also a play on words or how things have shaped out. But then you break it down biblically. This is all self written. It's all been written that the, that the, the, the fall of man is to put yourself in hierarchies and dynasties and things of that nature, you know, and it, we've already seen it, you know, guys that were princes or kings. Uh, have lost their lives. I mean, just the 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 overall movie of the Ten Commandments is about the king of Egypt and the prince of Egypt, and then you know Moses leaving as a slave to go and write those people their freedoms. And so I I just think like it goes back to when I was younger. My dad was a history buff, and he would always say history repeats itself. And I think as we're older in our forties, what I think that's the scariest thing. And for me, it's a scary thing because I have two boys, you mm -hmm. know, and like I don't think that they understand the level of conscientiousness that goes along with all these ruling things within our laws. Yeah, yeah. like we're so divided. Like this is we might be inside the collapse of America because we also don't have the most intelligent people in leadership. Oh. Um, you know, there's a lot of division. I mean, we went through the whole COVID, <laughs> like disease is plaguing our country. There's like a new fungus or virus almost every day. Like this is how societies collapse. Like this is cyclical. It's historic. And I mean, to bring in the spiritual aspect as well, um, you know, some things that are prophesied, yeah. this, this kind of puts it in motion there you know, to like get there. Yeah. I think a lot of prayer has to happen on my end, at least. I, I just, I don't know how to really get to a conclusion other than like, I just have to be
be smart about it at the polls and I got to be smart about what I'm consuming as far as news and what type of narrative is being spot out or spun out there for us to actually consume as well. I think that's the, that's been kind of the scary part the last 20 years is just our consumption of the 24 hour news cycle. Right. And um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's been, it, it's hard because I look at certain things in this lens, like a kid, right? Like, and, and then I, again, I have to re reset and move forward as an adult and understand people are just going to be people, you know, I think that that's what we always have to kind of worry about. Yeah, people are going to be people for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't think a lot of people understand the 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 playbook that the Republicans are putting in place. And that's why, it, like, I just really want people to take this voting seriously. Like, but but it doesn't matter. Like, that's what I'm starting to understand. Because I had, like, an exchange with this guy on my page. And I told him, like, all the things that Trump did and didn't do and whatever. And he was just like, oh, well, I'm still voting for him. I don't care. He didn't care he was a convicted felon. You know, he didn't care that he did these things to women. He didn't care that he could be on the Epstein. Or he is on the Epstein's call log, like, that was just released or whatever. Um, like, they don't care about those things. They... And and for me, it's just like, it's the same people that are saying they don't care, they care about the other side being on it. So it's right. like, it's hypocrisy is what is killing me. Today. I mean, we talked about it last the last podcast. We talked about the previous one, too, is that's a very difficult stance that I have to know and take is the hypocrisy of it all. Yeah. Yeah. It's and then and then I'm also kind of wondering, like, are the Democrats going no they're not going too far like promoting about you know what's happening with project 2025 because it is it is pretty serious it's serious but if you're a conservative it's like happiness it's joy it's like the greatest thing to ever happen you know so but i do also kind of wonder if the democrats are like i don't know is it really gonna be a, a monarch to that extent? I don't think it's going to be a monarch. I think they wanted it to just be a corporation. Free enterprise, right? And and how can I get off with enterprise is the elitist of the elite unite. Yeah, because in the whole conservative party, you know, it's made up of Christian nationalists. It's made up of, you know, which are very strong in abortion laws. Um then you have, you know, the corporations and, and the elitist groups that's also in the conservative party. So they're going to, they want that tax cut to stay in place. You know, it's, so it's made up of a lot of different people, like. Well, moving parts, like I was going to show it with you. Um, hold on, what did you say? So I don't know, I feel like that those people are happy right now. They're they're all for this. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what we should do. I don't know. Because like I said in previous shows, like um, I, I go by whatever the laws are, you know? So I'll, he's, make adjustments. Court, I'll read it to you. He said, today's Supreme Court decision actually cites Nixon versus Fitzgerald and argues that one reason Trump is immune is that there is no clearly established a case to examine and that he didn't know he was wrong because the KKK Act is kind of vague. Well, here's the thing, and he writes, and accordingly, no court is ever faced with the question of a president's immunity from prosecution. All that our nation's practices establish on the subject is silence or silence, right? And so like, they're getting off on technicalities, which is the job of an attorney or an attorney general or just a DA or a defense attorney or a prosecuting attorney is to find the loopholes within the system. And there's a lot of loopholes in our system. And, and criminals usually know how to exploit those. They look for those loopholes. They look for those. And I think that when you have more of a devious mindset about how you're going to attack something, then this is it right here, right? Does that make sense? Like it, it for me, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so it's like it draws into comparison of something that I'm not necessarily wanting, and I know you don't want it. 
I don't want it for my children. I don't know. You don't want it for your family, but this is the reality at which we're at now. This is the fork, excuse me, the fork in the road that we we do have to take and we have to take it the right way. And then I was going to read another thing on it. Hold on one second. Um, Yeah, because like I'm at this point, I'm like, I'm accepting it all. <laughs> I'm just kind of accepting it. But then there's revolutionaries who are like, no, you shouldn't just conform. You should fight back and go and tear up the system. And I'm just like, I like getting money. I don't really want to do all that. I don't think violence is the answer to any of this. Like when you blow up the whole nation, then what? You have to build from scratch and start all over again. Yeah. And, and so like he talked about like the George Floyd thing, right? And he says the original George Floyd justice and Poli and policy act compromised by restricting the two sentences to law enforcement officers, but certified liar Tim Scott sabotaged the bill and all police reform at the behest of a white supremacist movement. And when it all comes full circle for years, a court, uh, a conservative, a conservative pro Confederate movement has claims that sheriffs are the only true law enforcement officers. Now, what a lot of people don't know is sheriffs or the police departments were actually there to make sure slaves weren't running loose. Slave catchers. Slave catchers. So, and that's not to knock who's in law enforcement. I have family in law enforcement. I have family in the armed forces. But I, I there's a story of how it all started. So it's like, I've always kind of steered clear of it. Like, I never wanted to... be in that. I never wanted to go and serve my country in that capacity. And it's not a negative. It's just, that's my birthright and choice, right? I, I have a choice on that. Yeah, I'm anti-war. Well, I am. I, I'm, I'm all about love, peace, and harmony, and being collaborative. And when you can't justify that, or you can't come to grips or come to, you know, some sort of agreement amicably uh, Then, with like, yeah, diplomatically, like, come on, let's talk about it. like resolution through talking and Verbal and nonverbal communication, meaning writing and and understanding that. But I just like I told you earlier in the in the segment was is in 2020, what I took away from it was a lot of people have a hard time with listening and reading comprehension. And a lot of people listen and hold on to words and read words that they want to read, not what necessarily the context of that word was actually being meant or being spoken to. or that sentence or whatever they're hanging on to. And, and as a person that is a leader, right, within my own organization and the things that I, I talk about, I have to be very conscientious about my messaging. You know, sometimes my messaging is really stern. Sometimes it's stern, but then loving. Sometimes it's just a complete loving message. Sometimes it's without discernment, but just encouragement. Right. So like there's just different levels to how we, we we're going to respond to certain ways that people are communicating. And when that's I based was, on their experience. I How was watching that debate, it was just so hard coming from someone who has a communications background in speaking, mm -hmm. right, to hear the level of non-intuitive and very non-intellectual talk. And it's hard. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, most of you had to have gotten your diplomas just from high school. A lot of people don't. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> Right. And so it's like, I've always wondered how they got by, you know, it's like, but we also grew up in a system where, you know, no, no child was left behind. That was our system in the eight, late eighties and early in, in all of the nineties, right? No child ever left behind. If you can even trace back to the kid that was really on his way to continuation school at your high school, right? They were just on a fast track to being, you know, expelled or exonerated from the, the school and and now we're dealing with all those people in our society there's no class for that exactly so we're and we're not on the same wavelength. Not, like so it's like so what you're saying could be yeah. totally received inappropriately or incorrectly because they don't get it because they can't they don't have the capacity the experience the knowledge to even process the words that are coming out of your mouth, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. And it's why it's even like in the music industry, right? With, between, you know, the beef that we talked about and, and those types of things. If you break the levels down of, you know, that Kendrick's now just, you know, summer anthem, right? 
and you break that down and you can put it in almost every facet of your life. Right. Yeah. And I think it's not talked about enough because it's like, we don't have like a, a socialist type uh, gathering other than it's between you and I and our friends, right? Like that's what we would call that as being, you know, a social gathering or a fellowship and things like that, where meetings of the mind actually are trying to come together correctly. Um, I just think it's, people have a skewed sense of what morality really is and what what is right and what is wrong, you know, because there are people that are going to toe the line on the wrong. Yeah. There are people that are going to cheat their taxes. There are people that are going to cheat the system to get what they need to get. And then there's people that are going to live by the letter of the law and and do the what what is being said and what is being prophesied, whether it's in the Bible or in the Constitution. And they live by that letter. I know people like that, that literally live their lives based on what the book says and what that other book says. Yeah, like I really try. I mean, like, honestly, I don't even look at things as a race, like a race anymore. I look at things on a civil and uncivil level. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's based because I, the, I, there's real quick, there's a lot of people who are like, just like me, I don't think like them, you know? And I might be more aligned with like an Asian person or a Mexican person or a white person or whoever um, on some of those issues. So yeah. that's just the, that's where I'm at with everything. A lot of this can be stereotypical and traced to stereotypical behavior, right? Like, I don't think sometimes when I do speak to someone who I've never spoken to before, whether it's on the phone or in person, a lot of times I've told you this, uh, in pre-production meetings, like when I was in mortgages, my phone voice is different than my appearance, right? And and so when I would meet clients for the first time, they're like, you a brother? No. There was a lot of shock and awe all the time. It's like, dude, like, okay, I, I get it, but then I don't get it, you know? But like I said, 2020 was kind of that opening portal to a lot of people really sharing their their thought processes about what and I had to let a lot of people go <laughs> I did too yeah like that and I think that's kind of what we're recovering from because a lot of people have had to do that because for whatever reason people have doubled down on this political stuff mm -hmm. like people are divided and and you know People are tribal and and just kind of like what you were saying with the Kendrick and Drake thing. There's a lot of people out here who think Drake won the battle, you know, but that's just because they're riding for Drake no matter what. And from their experience, they aren't able to allow Kendrick to have won that just yeah, because or have the mental capacity to just be an adult in a in a complex thinker, right? Like an objective. Being objectively thought process oriented. I, I think like I think that's what's cool about you and I is is that I can see your viewpoint. I don't have to agree with it though. You know, but I can see it, I can validate it, I can affirm it, you know. I, I think that's the, the other thing, like even being in relationships when we talked about relationship things and it's you can have your inclination or your assumptions or your insecurities or your fears, but you cannot press upon those things on your partner. You cannot press upon the things that you fear, you can share them with them. But if I don't agree with your fears or your insecurities or your behavior with those things attached to them, I'm not obligated to have to, to deal with that and mm -hmm. or to agree with it. So it's like it's really hard because it get everything gets really emotional. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of my mentors always says, you, you can't play this game emotionally. You know, because emotions are set to just be in the now and they're very quick and they're very swift. And then they take and it's what it, it, it takes the, the, the thrill and the actual enjoyment of the process of what you're trying to do or accomplish. It steals it. It's the stealing of that joy. Right. Because you may fear something like a roller coaster. Right. We go to Disneyland. You may not want to ride the credit coaster. Right. And. I, I can sit here and peer pressure you all day long to write it. And then you write it. And then my first response to you is, I know you liked it. And you're just like, no, I didn't. I did it. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't want to do it in the first place. Right. And so. Right. Right. I, 
I just believe like personal agendas, agendas of others, like we have a birthright to that. Um, but it's just I think people should listen. I think people should like just where we are in the state of the world. Right Isn't people that the key word right now? That's the key word right now. What? It's just listen to comprehend. Yeah, or or listen. Yeah, exactly. Listen to comprehend. Try to understand their side, and you know, just just listen and and take it in. You know, absorb it. Sit with it for a second before speaking and before getting offended. And I just really think the mature thing our country needs to do is that. And there, we're our country is so low in emotional intelligence and the EQ, like the EQ, there's a lot of, you know, research on emotional intelligence right now that's coming out, you know, with this is, I don't, I don't have all the details of it, but we're now in a place where researchers, doctors have understand that we are emotional beings and we need to keep that in check. Mm -hmm. You know, not just being logical, like our emotions do overwhelm us and we need to learn how to keep those in check as well. Like men have emotions, like men always say women are more emotional or whatever, but men also have emotions and that's anger. And yeah, I, I mean, I deal with it every day, you know, and I'm not afraid to share that because I deal with being slow to anger because my anger, my rage, the things that engulf me uh, really that I'm passionate about. If I, I like, if I love you and I'm, and I'm trying to show you that I love you and I'm always having to put myself out there um, to prove that love, like that shit gets, it's tiresome, right? And it's tiresome in a sense where it's like, okay, well, if you don't believe me, then, you know, fuck it, you know? And, it, and it's hard because it's like the people that we shouldn't be believing are the people that are at the top. It's like, what the fuck? Like, I don't, understand how we've gotten to this point in our country in our society and with our daily dealings just with each other yeah. and, and right the emotional capacity to love show grace and to also understand one another as humans that takes um, a lot of effort and i don't think people are do wanting to do that people rather like look at violence like when people these young boys are fighting or whatever they don't talk it out they just start fighting or shoot each other and it's over and it's like a whole nother cycle of craziness but you know i just saw a dude that you know um the mom used to be in our organization and it just happened out in elk grove and you know she left our organization because the dude was you know coaching somewhere else or whatever and he just killed his parents a couple of days ago what no growth so it's like wow you know, it's hard because do you really know this person? And I'm not speaking ill will about it. Like, it's just, that's, it's an example of, the like, do, I, of you know, do I understand your makeup? Do I understand what makes you tick? You know, and, and I don't think a lot of people are very charismatic to that. And they're not compassionate to how maybe what I've gone through in my childhood and in my adulthood and my young teen life, you know, I was a, a young parent, you know, and, and so there's a lot of struggles I had as a young black male trying to play baseball, trying to get my education and then also raise two kids. Yes. Are those things that were on me that I did? Yeah, I did. But there is a level of grace that comes with just in our religion together, right? Like what we have and what I can ask God for or my church and the pastor for help or the congregation to help uplift me through these trials and tribulations, because we're all going to go through something. Like, it's not like we're not, but it's just really hard to digest and consume the shit that we see every day. I, I send you stuff all the time because it's it's just it's mind blowing. Half the stuff you post and half the stuff I send you because I don't post the same amount of things that you do that are very conscientious. But and I appreciate you for that because I feel like, OK, as a friend, that's Stacy's lane. Like, cool. She's going to keep me. She's actually posting for me sometimes like. I do want to post that, but I can't because I have to show a higher level of conscientiousness because I'm dealing with kids. And so they might not need to see I know. That. I always think about that, too, because I know my niece and nephew are on my page. So I, I, I do pull it back a little. 
But I love it though because it it, it helps me because. But I rather go. I do want to go harder. <laughs> But it helps me because I'll tell you this is because I feel like you speak, you're speaking for not just me. There's other people that you are helping with, with that and helping understand all of it too. And I think that, that that can't be lost in the shuffle and that can't be lost in the messaging of what what is going on. Yeah, Uh, because I know people aren't tapped into that lane. Like there's so many people who don't even get involved in our democracy at all. Like I think in, I don't know, what's the population? Like 300 million, only maybe a hundred million show up to vote. So there's 200 million people in our country that don't vote, <laughs> you know, but the Republicans are going to, they're going to come out every time. They know how the system works. That's, And that's I feel the like thing the Democratic they know. Party in right now, like, is still running on that black ticket. Got to show that we're in the hood, and it, it's just all the like, like it's like that Chris Rock movie, Head of State. Like, if you go rewatch that dude, just like the the innuendos, the stereotypical behavior, just of what he was running on, what kind of platform, you know, what was the agendas, what was getting accomplished, what was being solved. I mean, it's it's hard. It's in and I feel like some of this stuff is taking away from the American dream, you know. And it's scary. It's scary to me because now my kids are of age where they're going to have kids. Right. And at some point I'm going to be a grandfather, hopefully, and blessedly from the man above that I I have that opportunity to. have my last name continue on and, and those types of factors. And it already is because I have two boys, but, you know, And are they? war stops all of that. War won't allow us to have families and to have generations and, you know, thrive. Like that's, that's the part that scares me most about all this is how hot headed people are and they're ready to have another civil war, you know, over these ideologies. Like really, you know, I mean, you really want to fight over the abortion like you don't want women to have abortion or you i guess they well they see it as they don't want people to kill or murder babies at any point you know but so i get it but it's just <sighs> this fit says it all like just give us the freedom like you guys republicans want people to have freedom and individual liberties, but they're taking that freedom away. And a lot of these things don't affect them. Like if a woman wants to have, well, but then shit. Cause they, they're probably looking at it as, cause there's corporations in there. If women are killing their babies, then that means that's one person less in the labor force, or that's one person less as a consumer. You know, you could look at it that way. So maybe that's why they have that angle. Get it that way. I think that that's a lot of their ideology towards that is that. Like it's so it's it's too all confused. It's too embedded, intertwined. Like you really I, like I get it. Like I understand everybody's point of view, but I don't know. I just think if if things don't affect you directly, you should allow people to have the freedom to do whatever they want. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and hold on, I, I had one more thing for you on it because I know that I know you read it because it was really good, right? The, the thread. Um, Or even give, or maybe we should, um, you know, how Texas and all them want to succeed from the union. <laughs> like maybe that's not a bad idea. And then we won't have to go back and forth and people are fighting all the time. Like well, maybe. I said right here, he says. You don't need to be a racist to protect a racist. You don't need to. Be, you don't have to believe in white supremacy to protect a white supremacist. Someone already created a system for it. Like, that's a powerful quote. Like, and it's like because it, it goes on both pendulums of the of the spectrum, right? Like, I don't believe in racism. Like, both my children are of interracial descent, and how dare me or anybody else say that they're not a human being? Like that's what we're, we are. We're just, we're one race of people under God's eye and watchful thinking and things of that nature. But what scares me more is, is like we're taking so much away from what 
you and I grew up with. Yeah, the pro progress that this country is made. Yeah, it's it's a hard pill to swallow, and I don't have an issue with you know LBGTQ and and trans and bi and gay, and I don't have an issue with any of those people. My sister's gay. Like I, it's she has a beautiful family. You know, I have you know two nieces and a nephew from it, and mm -hmm. like it's love, and it's not. I don't care what you do behind your closed doors. I just care that when you're outside or when we're inside your home or when we're in a gathering that you're civil and that you're an actual human being, like you're, you're compassionate and you're loving and your thought, your thoughtfulness is what is missing in all of this. I feel like there's a level of human, just human nature that's not being provided in a political spectrum. anymore. And I think a lot of people attack that because of the religious faction in the conservative party who think that it's a sin. But then again, like let that person deal with that sin with God, <laughs> you know, cause this is who people are. Like, I'm sorry. Like since the beginning of time, like there's been gay, there's been, tr uh, tr you know, trans, there's been, I guess they used to call them three sex people, you know, in ancient times, like there's, th it's not like this is just, you know, people can control that. That's what I'll say. You know, mm -hmm. I think you, if you're, I mean, you, I don't know. I don't really want to get into all that, but I, I just do believe that people are this way. And if you don't want to be a certain way, you do kind of have to choose that if you want to follow God, but that's a whole nother thing, you know? But, um, so yeah, so those people, they don't, I don't know. They, they shouldn't impose their beliefs on others. I guess that's all I'm saying, especially in a situation like that. It doesn't, if somebody's gay, that's not going to hurt a corporation. <laughs> that's not going to hurt how they're judged by God. You know, it's, it's God's, leave it up to God. That's the free will aspect of it for me. So why put laws in place to stop that? I agree. That's what I don't understand. I agree wholeheartedly. I think that that's going to be kind of the marker of where we're going to head towards. Yeah, it's like, I, and I mean, I guess people are offended, um, you know, that we just finished up Pride Month and there are a lot of things at those events that are very risque. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of nakedness and and whatnot. And I think, you know, there within the LGD you know, within that party, like, or in that faction, there's different extremes of it. Like there are people who just want to be sexually liberated, but then there's also people who just like your sister who wants to live and have a family, you know? So it's, I don't know, that, that whole issue is, is wild to me. It is. It's crazy, right? It's, it's a sad state of affairs that we're in right now. Yeah. And like, oh, real quick. And I saw this video yesterday. It was this guy. He's like, oh, I'm a reporter. And he went up to some cops in San Francisco. And the cops were like, or he's like, isn't it wrong or indecent, indecent proposal or exposure? These people out here naked. And they're like, no, as long as they're not, um, I guess, doing salacious acts in public. You know, they could be naked out there in San Francisco. It goes into that, too, what we just talked about, like people tiptoeing the law, the letter of the law because of their own beliefs, beliefs and those things. And so they're going to find any loophole that they can to make sure that their beliefs are not necessarily pressed upon on people, but they're exposed. They're exposing themselves to those beliefs and then they want you to know that that's what they believe in. Yeah. And the big thing was, oh, well, you know, there's children out here. So immediately I'm just like, oh, you're right. You know, that's crazy. You know, you shouldn't do those kind of things in front of children. But the parents brought the kids to the pride event. <laughs> so that's that's not necessary. That's on the parents. Yeah. But there's no you know? real balance system like there used to be, you know, and, and I'm a product of private and public school education and things were ruled differently in a private school right? Things were handled differently in a private school. Like we got the ruler to the hand and you got the switch or the paddle, you know, if you didn't do what was right and you get to you sign up for those bylaws. 
at the public school and then it's like just go to the detention or go to the principal's office go to the vice principal's office go serve three days in on-campus suspension go serve five days off-campus suspension or in-home suspension so it's like and I've always looked at those individuals that were kind of habitual with that were some of the guys and girls that I know for years, they were very highly intelligent, highly intelligent, just not highly motivated um, to utilize their intelligence in the right facet, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they knew their loopholes. They knew how to press the buttons. They knew how to get what they wanted to get out of that particular situation. And a lot of those people ended up being really good businessmen or women. Yeah, like we all have our own personalities and purpose and, and skills and some use them to for good and some use them for bad. That's all I, you know, could think of. One thing I was noticing recently is the state of Louisiana. They're putting forth a lot of bills and laws, too. And one that I noticed they just put out was that they are making it mandatory that Kid, or the Bible is read. Did you have you heard about this law? So basically, they're putting Christianity, or it's it's something like having to read the Bible at school at a public school. So my mind, I'm just like, hmm, well, that's not so bad. I mean, you know, the Bible. If you look at it not from a spiritual standpoint, it does have a lot of principles and you know morality issues but it also does have some racy things like incest and you know in the bible as well so it's like what exactly are they teaching but also we i mean if you're gonna force a you know christianity on people then you should also put in you know muslim or islam faith and maybe some jewish maybe buddhist you know like Keep it separate, church and state separate. Like I wouldn't see, I I don't see anything wrong with doing that. But it's just an interesting thing that's happening. Like there's a lot of interesting things happening in our nation right now, and um, a lot, and religion is definitely something that's being pushed. Christian religion. <laughs> Well, and, and you know, well, real quick, and then some people were just like, oh, you know, this is God moving, you know, but. God is also the same God in Islam and the same God in Judaism. It's Abrahamic. It's the same God. So I wonder if people are going to push back. That's all I'm saying in that, that case. A lot of people don't even have that letter of the law on those things as far as the conscientiousness and the, the efforts to understanding that those gods are same pillars. It's the same stories. I started reading the Quran recently and it's literally the same stories, but we were raised that it was a different God. Like Allah was a, you know, a different God. It's the same God. Mm -hmm. And I just think God is so amazing that he's reaching. My home girl is a Muslim and, and she, she put me up on game about say eight years ago about that. And shout out to her, man, because she, she allowed me to kind of dispel some of that and debunk some of those ideologies that I didn't know. That we were taught. I felt like a plot, plot twist. And I felt like it, it depends on where you went to church too. Yeah, yeah. The openness of that church is and how smart that pastor is. And that's why personally I enjoy Midtown so much is because it's very open and I can ask questions when I need to ask, you know, especially things I don't know. Because I ask questions because I want to know the answers and, and I want to have a comprehension of what I'm reading or listening to, right? And, and I'm big on sermons and I'm big on the word, like the daily devotional word for me. It always feels like, especially when I'm in a time of need, that those, those things hit me the right way. And so I can discern correctly. I can actually move accordingly to what is feeling my feelings and then what's also written and then what's also presented to me in my face. Mm -hmm. and I can make an accurate depiction of that so there's just a lot to unpack um, I wasn't really happy I felt like we as a nation were, were are, are just the butt of a lot of jokes right now 
Yeah, I just, I haven't really tuned into what global news organizations are saying about what's happening, but it can't be good. <laughs> it can't be good. It shows weakness. And that's what people need to realize. Like, if you want to be tribal, then we need to all come together as America because this is, we're looking crazy out here. We're looking crazy. But, um, oh, and just one last little point about the, the issue of putting religion in schools. Like, I, I, I really feel like we do need to establish morals and ethics. Like, I think that should be a part of curriculum. So, like, you know, whether it's through the Christian faith, like, I personally think they should bring the principles, the, the moral issues in all the faiths into, um, into a class or the curriculum in some way. Yeah. I felt like we had those growing up. I felt like we had a level of systematic um, delegation and just like, what is the word? I want to say just more, there was more discipline and instruction. And it, it made sense why there was discipline and instruction. Did you go to a private school? Uh, up, in, up until fourth, fifth grade, fifth grade. Okay. So, yeah, you had that, yeah. Because I went to a public school my whole life. and yeah, When I moved over to the South Side. So that was like middle of third grade, fourth grade. is okay. basically when I got to experience public school for the first actual year. You know, outside of pre-K and kindergarten. Pre-K and kindergarten were actually at a public school. And then the first couple of years were in a private institution. And um, I learned a lot. You know, because like those are very espungent years. Like you, you're a sponge. You're taking yeah. everything. You're trying to learn what's right and wrong. You're totally. as a kid, you're always trying to tiptoe that line between what's going to piss off mom and dad or what's going to make grandma and grandpa upset or or get me what I need to get. You know, and so I think that every kid that's coming up, even in today's world, is still trying to find out who they are. And I think there's guys that are 43 and women that are 43 like us that are still trying to find out what what line they need to 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 walk on and yes. what road they need yes. to because nobody taught us like we didn't a lot of people don't have rite of passage ceremonies mm. you know and i think those kind of things are important like i want to open a school or something where we teach kindness you teach the you know ethics you teach people how to the basics like how to clean yourself how to you know handle different situations um how to speak to people just the basics like and and everything that's happening right now in our government shows me that people don't have these basic fundamentals of kindness and patience and peace well and definitely not an understanding you get the nail they just don't have an understanding in those facets or what do you want to call them buckets and so how can you fill your bucket with the passion that you may have for something if you don't understand it in its totality. Yeah, and it's showing. Oh, it's big time. It's showing that people don't have those buckets. The remember, buckets have I, no handles. Yeah, well, remember I told you T.D. Jakes talks about skipping steps. He has a book about it. Mm. And I read that book. When Charles gave me that book to read, it took me a full year to read it. And because every chapter, every time I read it, it, it hit home. And so I would have to take days, even sometimes weeks, um, and I'd have to set it down and I couldn't do it anymore, right? Like, and it took me a full year to actually get through that book because I had skipped so many steps biblically, like within my life. And it just, it kind of put me into a, a depressive state because of what I hadn't been doing or how I hadn't been living uh, righteously uh, through the word and the things that my parents were trying to give me and my grandparents, more importantly, were trying to give me and the sense of community that, that it really was. And, and again, that's why you, I think you see it's like I, I outpour myself so much within my academy and within baseball because I, I just, it's my way of giving back to what I know what was right. Or what will help them be successful at anything. Yeah. <laughs> Period, you know? Like if, I know people have a spectrum on what's right and wrong or whatever, or how can you tell me what's right and wrong? Well, there is a basis. <laughs> there is a standard. There should be at least. I a standard on that. And it's, 
and it's scary. It's sad. And then we just have to keep talking. And you and I, I mean, I'm grateful for our relationship because it's gotten more comprehensive and it's gotten deeper and, and, and more intimate in that sense, you know, and, and what people don't understand is, is, go ahead, I'll let you. It's just taking the time to get to know people. I wanted to say that earlier when you were talking about this. It's like, it we, people need to take the time to get to know another person. And I think if we did that, if we listened and did that, then a lot of this could be avoided. Like that's, you know what I mean? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Like when you understand someone, you give them more grace. Yeah. And without having grace, then you're going to have chaos, right? Without grace, you're going to have chaos. So that was a good topic. I, I appreciated it today. I know. It was very good. It was really embarrassing sitting in that hotel bar. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? You know, it's it's really easy for me to just pick up my phone and go back to my room and then just watch, you know, uh a, a delayed game or you know rewatch something else but I, I just I wanted to see it for what it was and it was just like yeah I was hoping Biden came out swinging but he totally failed but I think he had an anxiety attack as well I don't think he has uh because the next day he came out like a whole new man <laughs> had his shirt unbuttoned and he was like eyes were wide open like if you think about it debating and sharing your thoughts and he was overly prepared. Like, I think they just gave him way too many facts and he he failed. And a lot of people fail in those moments, but he 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 wasn't supposed to fail in that moment. But he's an older guy. Like you said, it was bedtime. It was. It was late. And, that should and be the anxiety of debating. I think that kind of messed him up, too. You can all kind of form and. I like that kind of shit. You give me a topic and I'm able to study it, then I'm able to talk about it. Let's rock. You know, it's yeah. kind of why. But, but if you have a speech impediment and you're not very articulate, that could be a high anxiety situation. For sure. And I think that's what happened to him. That's my whole thing right now. Talking about showing grace, right? Yeah. But the Democratic Party turned on him so fast. They were like, up, oh, replace him. Cue Gavin. Gavin was right there. I just feel like there's some power play coming up that we'll see. Well, he did go to Camp David to talk about his health. And I guess, he, and he even said in the next couple of days, he's going to make his decision. So we might have some big news in the next couple of days. I, I think probably after the fourth. Um, but people really have to know in this election, we're not voting for Biden. We are voting for democracy and we're voting for keeping competent people in our federal government. We're voting to keep checks and balances in our government and to keep the progress that our country has made in civil liberties. That's what we're voting for on the Democratic ticket. <laughs> so because with Trump, it's the unknown. We really don't know what that man is capable of. No, because we got a project, right? We have a whole manifestation of what's going to happen. Yeah. And I just hope they don't make us the slaves. Like, I'm like, are they going to go that far? That would be so crazy. I would not make it. I would be fighting. <laughs> I am not going to be a slave. I promise you that right now. <laughs> but anyway. Hey. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And thank you for this conversation, Alec. And I'll talk to you later. Awesome.